Hello, my name is Ritesh Tandon, and I am a technical solutions architect in Cisco. Today, in this demo, we are going to see how we can leverage Cisco's ASI SGN solution to dynamically insert a L4, L7 device in the data path of two workloads on the same ACI fabric. The scenario which I have is called uh, L4, L7 insertion with PBR. PBR means policy-based routing. Okay, so uh, the lab scenario which I have got is like I've got an EBG client which is tied to a, a BD client, a EPG web which is tied to a BD web. For simplicity, I have defined their own BDs and EPGs. One-to-one -one mapping EPG to client to BD client, EPG web to BD web. I've got a client PC on the client side. I've got a web PC on the website. Very simple. Okay. I've got the Anycast gateways dot one on the same subnet 68.1, 69.1. Right. These are the subnets which are defined on the BD, which is your Anycast gateways interface. They are simply put in the same VRS. Okay. Now, what I want to do is there are two EPGs. By default, they can't talk to each other. Different EPGs can't talk to each other. Basic concept. I want that my HTTP traffic should go through the firewall. My ICMP traffic should be from the fabric itself between the EPG to EPG. Right. Here again, the play is with contracts. We will do something called a PBR uh, redirection using contracts and using a L4, L7 chaining, which is done to a, a, a concept called service graph. Right. And end of the day, we want from client PC to web server, HTTP should go through the firewall and ICMP should be directly routed between uh, uh, using the ACI fabric. This is what we want to achieve. You're covering two scenarios here. You are doing a policy based routing for selective traffic. And you are doing an inline insertion of your L7 device, which is your firewall. Right. So. Uh, what I've done is like, I've done a pre-provisioning of stuff. You need like a template which will define because ACI has to know what is your web uh, outside and your inside traffic, right? So there is a call. Uh, I will also stating in in contracts there is a concept called consumer and providers. Now consumer would be the web client who is consuming services from the uh, from the web server. Okay, so. What I do is I typically tell ACI what is my relationship. I place my, and this is called a service graph template. I will also create a configuration for the ACI FTD, which is the virtual FTD I'm going to use for this particular demonstration. And also I'm telling ACI that this, this, ACI, uh, this FTD is tied to my VMM domain. Inside the ACI, Interfaces are uh, inside and outside, which are mapped to the uh, is to the interface on the VM itself. That means, you know, VNIC four, uh, VM NIC four, or VM NIC three. I will define it here. If and cluster interfaces come in right now, this is just a single single FTD running. But you uh, mostly the firewalls are come in pairs, right, with the VIP on top of it. So then you can create two. Uh, FTD one, FTD two, two devices, and then you can say cluster interfaces would be, you know, gigabit zero of uh, the FTD one with gigabit zero of FTD two, named at inside, and similarly, uh, gigabit one and one on FTD one and two would be outside. This is just for ACI to understand what your uh, VM looks like on the vCenter. Okay, this is the device portion of it. Now, to create the actual flow, what we do is we, we say apply the service graph template. This is where the, the major portion of the configuration lies, right? So in this, what I'll tell them what is my consumer. My consumer is the client PC. So if I just search it, this is my uh, client EPG and my web EPG, which is the provider in this case. Right. Then I tell them what is the contract name I want because everything is going through the happening through the contract. So ACI, I'll uh, give a typical naming convention which I follow, and I will say HTTP PBR. And I will say I I don't want to do all the redirection or 
uh, insertion for all the traffic. I just want to do selective. And how I'm doing that? I will create a filter. ACI HTTP. And I will say I only want port 80 to be redirected. Great. Going next. What I do is I will the, this configuration which you are going to see now. It loads fast. Is to give you the understanding of which BD it is getting mapped to on the firewall. So we had created a BD, separate BD and any cast gateway for the inside interface of the firewall and outside interface as per the diagram. So it's saying that it will be mapped to. Uh, I have to use the the consumer is my firewall out. The redirect policy which I have already created is to redirect the traffic from inside inter outside interface to the inside interface, right? And the interface of the firewall would be outside. And this is consumer because because it is sitting outside, right? Similarly, the BD which here will be referred to is firewall in. The redirect policy says that traffic from inside to outside and the cluster interface is inside. Okay, I'm just gonna double check it. Firewall out, outside to inside, outside. And the provider sits on the inside of the network. So firewall in, inside to outside and inside. Now, what I have to do is click finish. Okay. Go back to the vCenter. What you will do see is that same thing, VMM domain. You will see that inside and outside EPG is getting pushed. This is this is not seen on the config, but it is a uh, is what we call shadow EPGs, which are getting pushed down to the DVS. And the FTD is getting reconfigured automatically. You don't have to do the VIC level, uh, NIC level assignment also. Because you have you have shown ACI on which on the VM side which gigabit or which NIC to assign those interfaces on. It's all automated. Now, for the sake of simplicity, let's go to the FTD and look at the assignment. And you can see it is automatically assigned. Network adapter five and six because of the relationship which I have already configured on the ACI. On the on the ACI level, this is my client PC which is sitting outside the firewall, and I'm trying to access the web server inside. And you can see I am able to access the web server using port 80. ICMP is still getting dropped. Okay, if I have to ping the same server from here, you will see ICMP is dropped. But port 80 is sitting because it is going through the firewall. And there is another validation that you can do. You can log into the FMC. And you can see that the traffic port 80 is going through the firewall itself. And you can see the event here. Oh, protocol HTTP, firewall client, URL, everything is getting recorded. Of on the FTD, you can see it from the FMC. So this means that the port 80 is get, traffic is getting redirected from ACI in, inside the outside interface, and then through the inside interface, it is coming back and hitting the other EPG as per this diagram. This is what is happening right now. If I go back to APIC and I say that I create, uh, I'll go to my contract. Okay. slow I don't know why uh, I'll first create a filter I already created an ICMP filter okay I want to do the second bit of it I want to uh, put ICMP not through the firewall but between the EPCs itself through ACI I'll go to the same uh, contract which I have I'll create another subject and say allow ICMP subject. 
and put the name in as share update submit i have not selected the l4 l7 graph here okay so what i should go back and do is if i do a ping session it will work now and this is not going through the firewall if i go to the event section again you will not see any events coming in on the icmp this is a selective way you can direct the traffic using your use cases is a very powerful feature in aci 